Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We set for our first major conversation on the program this morning. And of course, looking at um, the court's dismissal is the federal high court dismissing the federal government's request for the extradi extradition of um, a former Super Cup Abakari. Well, uh, the federal government or the federal high court in Abuja uh, on Monday dismissed the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Mala Miesian's extradition suit seeking uh, to surrender Abakari to the United States of America to face fraud charges. The judge, uh, my Lord, the Honorable Justice Ian Kuo, uh, said that Mr. Malami was responsible for the failure of a case by instituting the extradition proceedings uh, despite the pending criminal case against Mr. Carey in Nigeria. Mr. Carey is a suspended deputy commissioner of police uh, is wanted by the American government over pending fraud charges filed against him and others at the United States District Court of the Central District of California. Now, reacting to this, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, uh, yesterday Monday described as a grand hypocrisy the extradition suit by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. It said the AGF should know better, as a law officer of the country, that the case of Kerry is a fair company, which means that the suspended head of the Inspector General of Police Intelligence Response Team cannot be extradited to the United States since he's facing drug-related crimes brought against him by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. With us this morning uh, to provide analysis of this, we have a Debola Ola Rotimi um, Lema. He's managing partner, Fountain Court Partners, legal practitioners based in Lagos. Uh, um, Mr. Debola Ola Rotimi, thank you very much for your time. Glad to have you join us. Now, is, is, this, is it possible that thank somewhere... Yes. Is it possible that somewhere in Abubakar Malami SAN's world, um, he never thought it was going to be impossible um, to extradite Kerry despite the nation's extradition rules? You know, the, 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 the courts are, uh, has only uh, amplified the provision of the extradition act. Uh, ordinarily, uh, the extradition act is an act that uh, comes to as an incident of uh, sovereignty. Every sovereign nation has the power to arrest and to punish and to also make laws for its own citizens. However, uh, if, there are, if there are crimes committed outside of the jurisdictions of the uh, surrendering uh, states, the requesting states can make uh, such a question. That was what they have done in respect of uh, the case of uh, uh, the former Super Corp, uh, Abakiari. However, uh, there was a section of the law, which is section 3, subsection 6A, which provides that uh, in actual the general, the general section 3 is like a restriction on the right of the uh, requesting state to request and the right of the surrendering state to also surrender. But the Section 3 generally now puts a, like an equivalence. Now, oh, if the um, accused or the suspect is already facing a criminal trial in the surrendering state of legitimate uh, actions or in respect of that uh, action that is requesting state is also making request, that person is also already facing a criminal trial for this particular uh, issue. Uh, Abba Kiali is already facing a criminal trial in Nigeria based on uh, its involvement or its alleged involvement in the case of, uh, uh, of drugs. And based on that, the law, the law court only expounded or exposed the provision of Section 3, Subsection 6A, which provides that if the surrounding state is already prosecuting the uh, alleged suspect for a different action or a different matter, that requesting that surrender state has a duty not to surrender the uh, alleged suspect until after he has finished his uh, terms of uh, imprisonment, if he's convicted, and if he's acquitted, then based on that one, they can still make the request. So I think the attorney general, maybe uh, there was a mistake on their part, on the part of his lawyers, to know that that particular section exists, or they, they thought, uh, based on that too, that the judge will, will still not uh, uh, prevent them. 
But like the judge rightly said, it's an abuse of court process. An abuse of court process is where you use the court process to the annoyance of the other party because there's an existing prosecution. And while there's an existing prosecution, the, the same court cannot close its eyes and uh, accede to the request of a foreign nation when the domestic nation is already prosecuting such a, a, an alleged suspect. So, so would you would you agree with those who are saying that this was entirely, you know, uh, a plot to shield uh, uh, Abba Kiari from all of this because the uh, Attorney General Malami should have known better to have prevented the NDLE from going ahead. Uh, I mean, to have intervened, not allowed that process to continue. So do you agree with those who say that this is actually just a disguise? It was just a plot, you know, to protect him? I would not agree with them because uh, the, the, the office of the uh, Honorable Attorney General of the Federation is a high office uh, which is uh, 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 occupied by someone who owes allegiance to the Constitution, who are allegiance, allegiance to the country, and who are allegiance to the citizens of this country. So maybe it was a mistake or a misstep on their part. That's what I will, I will, I will, I will conclude in this part. I won't say it was a, uh, although it was a, it was rumors that that was what the Atengela intended to do. But I won't subscribe to that. I will believe it was a misstep or a mistake on their part, a genuine mistake in this instance. So, but if it wasn't, you know, intended, you say it was a mistake, and he understands the law. We're talking about, you know, the law right here. Abubakar Malami, don't you think that he should have been very honest to ensure that uh, at the time that the extraditing of Kari wouldn't have happened because he would have ensured that, I mean, to ensure that the extradition goes through, that the NDLAE does not file a case against him? And just like I mentioned, uh, uh, if it's a genuine mistake, then uh, the we can mistake? condemn the uh, Honorable mm -hmm. Attorney General for because, uh, like I mentioned, he holds the high office of uh, assuming or being assumed to have known all uh, the provisions of the law because he's the chief law maker and the uh, legal advisor to the country, a legal advisor to the president as well. So he ought to have known the provision of the law that if he uh, puts in the uh, request for extradition, why the uh, criminal prosecution for Abakiali is ongoing by the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agencies, then uh, the, the the extradition request will not fly. He ought to have known. And I, I believe uh, it was a genuine mistake and holy mistake from the part of his lawyer who, who filed the application for, for extradition before the Honorable Court. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite difficult for Nigerians to understand how genuine this mistake is, especially where you had a lot of persons predicting exactly what was going to happen, and this is exactly the case that has happened. So how genuine uh, it, it, was this it, mistake? It, you know, the law, the law, the law is uh, written in English. Almost every Nigerian have predicted that, majority of Nigerians have predicted, myself have predicted that this could not fly because we look at the provision of the law. The court cannot close its eyes to the exact and the plain meaning of Section 36A of the Extradition Act. That when um, the, the alleged suspect that is expected to be uh, requested and surrendered is facing a criminal charge, even different from the one is uh, alleged to have uh, been requested, that the person would not be submitted to the uh, requesting country. So uh, every old man in Nigeria who read the provision of the Act knew that this was going to be the uh, exact. Um, response of the court when the matter was filed before the court. So, but if every common Nigerian, including yourself, understood all of this, then why then the the uh, one who should understand the law, I mean the chief protector of the law, did not see yes. this, he didn't understand it. What then is the excuse? You said common Nigerians, including yes. yourself, which I know you're not common, but we say common Nigerians understood this, and Abba Kiari, I beg your pardon, Abubakar Malami did not understand this. How this is possible. Well, like, like I mentioned earlier, it must have been a genuine and honest mistake on the part of the lawyers in the ministry. You know, the Attorney General is not, is not the only person that's prosecuting. He has lawyers in the department who does criminal, who does civil, who does some other department in the in the in the Ministry of Justice of the, of the Federation. So it must have been a an honest mistake of the lawyers who filed the process before the Honorable Court. They could have they could have waited for. Uh, drug law enforcement to finish its own prosecution, or they haven't because because it would have been amounted to abuse of process too. If they have allowed 
uh, uh, the NDLE to if they have activated the NDLE to suspend this prosecution because um, duty to domestic uh, countries is much more bigger than duty to the foreign country. So the, I, I think they should have allowed uh, and, and the law to finish its own prosecution and get a conviction or otherwise before filing the extradition uh, request. So I believe it was a genuine mistake. I, I refuse to to condemn the Attorney General, Honorable Attorney General, for uh, this uh, mis mis mistake. All right. Uh, um, I mean, the, the 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 history of this this case, um, this this issue has been well documented. Uh, NDLA comes up, catches the man in a situation, you know, holds a press conference, uh, informs the public about it, uh, demands that he should be uh, submitted. The police also come up and say a couple of things against the NDLA is a back and forth. The public is aware, the public outcry, and then the hand of the police are forced to do certain things. The man is handed over. You have uh, the police also saying no, but there are some people in the NDLEA who are guilty. There's some foot dragging. There's a committee set up to investigate. We wait for the committee to come out with this report. The report comes out. It's handed over to the Attorney General and then for legal advice. And then he makes a statement. In fact, before the report was concluded, it took a while. Uh, he made a statement saying... Um, uh, I just want to go back. Basically, he's exonerating, he's quoted to have exonerated uh, Abakari, though he came out to say that he didn't exonerate it and he was misunderstood. But this is the legal advice by uh, your learned colleague, Abuaka Malami, S.A.N. Now, this is what he said, quote, that there exists a prima facie case of conspiracy, collaboration, receipt, conversion, transfer, and or retention of the proceeds of unlawful activities contrary to the provisions of sections 15, 17, and 18 of the Money Laundering uh, uh, Prohibition Act of 2004 and section 17 of the EFCC Act, Cap E, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, against DCP Abakari and other suspects in view of the overwhelming evidence showing the nature of his disguised financial transactions and activities with uh, Abbas Hush Poppy, Ife Martins, and some other persons who are all confirmed members of an uh, international fraud network. Uh, he said, he continued to say, yeah, to just uh, 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 cut some things because of time. Although the facts of and circumstances of the case, of this case, as contained in the case file, are suggestive to money laundering. Uh, offenses against DCP Abakari and his accomplices, uh, he names them, uh, to successfully prosecute them, there is a need for a more thorough dissecting and tracing of the suspected 33 proceeds of crime received by DCP Abakari directly or indirectly through the said accomplices. Um, so this, this is in relation not to the NDLEA case, but to the issue regarding Abakari and his involvement with Hush Puppy. I need to correct that. And yeah, some yeah, people yeah. interpreted this to mean uh, uh, an exoneration of Abakari, though Malami came out to say, no, he didn't exonerate. But looking at this statement, statement saying that um, uh, there needs to be more thorough dissecting despite the preponderance of evidence against a gentleman, some would say that the history of trying to protect Kerry is already there to lay ground for suspicion for this move by uh, the Ministry of Justice. And you can't divorce him, the Attorney General, from what his ministry did this suit. Well, uh, uh, just like I mentioned earlier, the, the fact that he has gone ahead to file an extradition uh, request before the court, his office has gone ahead to file an extradition request before the court, says that oh, he is not also protecting him. But it may have been, like I mentioned, it's, it may have been... Yeah, but, 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 but yeah, sorry to interrupt you, sir. The question we've been trying to ask, yes. and I know you, you get it, uh, what is the, the, the point? That's why I asked, is there any, 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 any possibility in Abakari's world that he is not aware? Because you can tell us that the Ministry of Justice will file this suit and the minister doesn't know about it. Sir, it's impossible. So is there any, 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 any reason in Abakari's world where he's not aware that he cannot file such uh, uh, a suit? Yes, like I mentioned to you that um, uh, as the Honorable Attorney General, he supervises several departments, and both civil and criminal. Uh, he's not the actual person, even if he's going to be the person that would authorize it, 
it may not be the actual person that will sign the process that will go to the court. And two, uh, the process may have passed through some, must also have passed through some other procedure. A senior legal person in the department going through the process uh, before getting to him. I, I'm sure if he's the one that signed the uh, request that went to court, uh, he depended on some other persons who must have done the, the nitty gritty and uh, the uh, leg work of the, of the matter before getting to him. And like I, I also mentioned too, uh, no one is above mistakes. Even judges, that's why you have appellate, appellate procedures. Judges on the, uh, the, of the lower court can make mistakes. And when you get to the appellate court, appellate court may also make a mistake. But when you get to the Supreme Court, even if the Supreme Court makes a mistake, it becomes a, a, a permanent thing. But if the mistake, the Supreme Court gets, if the matter gets to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has to look at, oh, the, the lower court made a mistake, then that's why the Supreme Court is there to correct those mistakes. So I think no one is above mistake, and I, I still believe uh, firmly that it was a mistake or a mistake or a genuine mistake on the part of those who filed the request because the fact that uh, Abakia is already facing a criminal charge escapades anyone who files a request from getting a, a, a confirmation from the court. And, and the good thing is that Section 3 of the, of, the, of the Act makes it like the court, like the clearing house for every extradition request you are going to file. Because the court can also look at it and say, oh, the man, the, the, the action has been, it's a it's stayed because if the man has committed an act, action for maybe 30 years, you have not made a request, and you are just making a request, the court can say, oh, this person uh, cannot uh, be surrendered to the requesting nation. Or if the uh, allegation is flimsy, the court also has a, a duty to say, oh, this allegation is flimsy, I cannot in good conscience allow uh, the requesting nation to have this person to be tried. So now, uh, the good thing is that we are in a democracy. Uh, unlike what happened in uh, Panama those days when America went to the uh, to, to Panama for drug and related cases and picked their, 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 their president and took it to America America. In this way, the court is uh, we are in a democracy and the court is the bastion of democracy and the court is enjoined in this particular section of the of the law to protect the interest of anyone that must surrender to the requesting nation to pass through the court process of court and that was what the court has just done in this in this case. All right. Uh, 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 before Messi comes in, b b based off of what you've said, I'd like to bring you the words of a, the Human Rights Writers Association who've um, uh, uh, called this action by the Honorable Attorney General uh, a, a grand hypocrisy. So just a few words from Huriwa. Now, this is what they said, quote, um, the grand hypocrisy and shenanigan of the Attorney General of the Federation and Miss of Justice Abubakar Malami S.E.N., if the DCP Abakari case is now obvious, is what they said. They w went on to say, quote, The action of the AGF is condemnable since he deliberately filed another matter against Kerry before seeking his extradition when, as a lawyer, he ought to know uh, that it is a uh, fair company since under the law you can't extradite someone already facing a uh, separate charge in Nigeria. I know you've been responding to this, but I just want you to look at this Horiwa statement now. Um, they said it is important to note or to ask the Justice Minister why he, why he didn't file the extradition suit about a year after Kerry was declared wanted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation until the NDLEA in Broglio, the whole drama, they say, Nigerian Snow is a planned script. That last uh, sentence, I think, it should be what you respond to, uh, sir. Yes, they, they, they are entitled to, you know, it's, it's their opinion. And they are entitled to it. I can't. I can't put it such like so that I am almost entitled to my opinion. But I feel like I mentioned earlier, uh, it may have been a, a mistake on the part of it. Because well, another thing is that for there to be a tradition request, there must be one a request from the requesting nation. Two, there must have been a, a warrant of arrest from the requesting nation. We the, the public was aware there was a warrant of arrest, uh, but the request are actually. They, 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 may, they may not come until uh, the Honorable General makes the, uh, the request to the court. If the request does not come from the requesting nation, Honorable General cannot just enter the court and 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 and, and may request that uh, because all the requests, all the requests, the bond of the uh, alleged crime against the person in the requesting nation, in the court of the requesting nation, the warrant of arrest on the requesting, all of these things forms bond of exhibit. That must be shown to the court and like i mentioned like you know section three is an inhibition preventing the court from just uh, allowing the court to exercise its own discretion without just uh, following the attorney general's request you must look at those documents and show that this person actually has committed a crime in the uh, requesting nation 
this person has been charged before a court in the requesting nation or his accomplices have been charged before a court the requesting nation. Three, there has been a one out of arrest from the requesting nation. These are the three things that the court will have to look into. And considering the fact that the court will have to look at, are there other criminal charges against this person in Nigeria? Are there, uh, in respect of that same offense, are there also uh, criminal charges against this suspect with respect to different okay, matters or different issues, which is the case of uh, Abba Kiali in this matter, in the sense that the court went through the activity and realized that, oh, there is a pending case before uh, the, uh, the a, a competent court in Nigeria by the uh, drug law enforcement, which is under the supervision of the attorney general. And based on that, the court assumed that the attorney general should ought, ought to know that well, there's a pending case, whether in respect of the case to which the person is being requested or a different case pending in, an, in, in, in court in Nigeria, Ola then the person Ola request Ola will not We, we have to, uh, you know, look at all the issues because we're out of time. I'm sure we have less than two minutes uh, to be Thank on you. this particular issue now. But a quick one. You say that it's uh, a genuine mistake is a mistake, honest mistake in your words. I I'd like to find out, is there any way that this honest mistake can be corrected by the law, uh, by any form of appeal, uh, you know, or corrected by the government itself, I mean, by uh, the system, and also being appealed by other uh, interests party. Thank you very much. If the matter is appealed, uh, I, I suspect the... the is it possible the for this mistake to be corrected? That's what I'm asking. Yes, it, it, it can be corrected in two ways. Either the prosecution will uh, withdraw the case, it withdraws the case, uh, fight against uh, Abba Kiali by the uh, Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agencies, then another request can be filed in court. Or, or they, they wait till the outcome of the uh, Drug Law Enforcement Agencies prosecution is concluded, then they can make a request. And he has finished uh, the term, term of uh, imprisonment, then he can make another request. Those are the two ways it can be corrected. Okay, but apart from that, what would you say is... Uh would be the implication of the court throwing out the federal government's application to extradite Abe Kiari to the United States. I mean, on the Hush Poppy case and on Abe Kiari, what does this mean to the case uh, with Hush Poppy and also with Abe Kiari? Being the fact that he's also yes. been uh, facing some charges with, uh, that's been filed by the NDLE in Nigeria. Yes. He does not stop Abakiri because, for instance, Abakiri case has, has come to an end. We are awaiting sentence from the last I read about like a week ago. The sentence will be, uh, if not delivered just yesterday, will be in the next like uh, 48 hours. Uh, Abang Ramon uh, Oshwapi will be sentenced. So his case does not have anything to, he's not tied down to uh, Abakiri being in, being in the US. Okay. And, and, and crime, crime does not have a time limit, uh, even if it's 20 years. That he finished his own term of uh, imprisonment, assuming the court convicted him for the crime of uh, drug in Nigeria, and he spends his uh, uh, term of imprisonment. The Honorable Attorney General, at any point in time, can still file a request because that request is still pending from the from America. It can still be filed in uh, the federal High court at that point in time because there will not be any exhibition uh, evictions at that time. Maybe for prosecution or some other case, then the court will definitely grant it at that point in time. Well, all right, thank you so much for your time. Adebola Olaro to me, Lemma, managing partner, uh, Fountain Court Partners, legal practitioners. It's been an interesting uh, engagement with you this morning. Look forward to having you back sometime soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, uh, we'll return from a short break. We'll look at uh, university graduates, particularly um, graduates, Nigerian graduates from Ukraine and their issues with the Nigerian Medical Council all ahead on breakfast. Stay with us.